Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, April 18th, 527 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with the Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. Day of the market, we're in a short-term and medium-term pullback. Might call it a mild correction between 4 and 5% off of the highs on the S&P 500. You can see the trend gauge over here. We've got market leaders flagged with the red arrow. And our short-term trend, all five of the major indexes trending below their short-term 21-day moving average. And the slope of that line has rolled over. Medium-term 50-day moving average, still neutral with the red sub-arrow. Dow small caps, mid caps, and NASDAQ 100, and S&P 500 all below their 50-day moving average. Uh, the slope of the line for NASDAQ 100 has flattened out. S&P still trending up slightly, but um, this is awful close to going to the red arrow as well. Long-term, and reminder, the market never gets into serious trouble, as in bear market. Uh, situation or even a 12% uh, off the highs. Uh, typically, we need to break the 200 day moving average. Uh, normally, it's about 10 to 12% off the highs when that happens, but bear markets, they all happen under this uh, key level, key long term moving average. And all five of the major indexes are still above that level. So, although there's been a lot of pain in stocks and certainly in small caps, this is. Uh, Nowhere near uh, a severe correction just by the numbers. So what happened today? Another disappointing day for the bulls. We gapped up a quarter percent on the S&P, had a quick pullback, but then uh, formed about a one hour cup and broke out to the upside. Late morning, however, a harsh reversal and a two hour trend lower to uh, down about four tenths of a percent. And then uh, just chopped into a close into the close in about a half percent uh, trading range. So another green to red day, fifth straight negative close for the S and P five hundred. Possibly, uh, I did see where more than half of the names in there, however, uh, were green on the day. It was definitely a day where value stocks outperformed growth stocks within the S&P and actually across all market caps that happened with mid caps and small caps uh, as well. And uh, the RSP equal weighted, uh, not down uh, significantly. So uh, look for some green shoots. You know, we're optimists here. We would certainly like to see the market going higher, but uh, we're prepared for anything uh, that happens. That's how we roll here at Revere. Here are the numbers. Our 21 over 21 leaders composite, not a good day, down 1.06%, 5 positive, 16 negative in that list. The big 7, not too bad, down 2 tenths of a percent. RG8, down 0 0.45. S&P down 2 tenths. As I said, equal weighted S&P, just down a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ 100, down 0 0.57, equal weighted, just about the same. Dow slightly positive, mid caps down two tenths. Russell 2000 small caps down 0.26. Global 6040 down two tenths. In house protection, our big cash position uh, serving us well during this pullback down 0.06%. 0, 0. Let's get to the charts. We'll start off with the indexes. Here's the SP 500. You can see it knocking again at that 5,000 level, fifth straight day down, one point, uh, only a one point uh, uptick in the 50 day moving average. So that's very clearly flattening out and the 21 looking to break below uh, the 50 day moving average next week. If we continue on the current trajectory, let's take a look at the, uh, the um, five minute chart for the intraday action. You can see a little bit of a gap up immediately sold, but then rallying coming in, uh, ran into resistance near yesterday's, uh, yesterday afternoon's highs, brutal two hour reversal, and then a big chop into the close. As I mentioned, another loss for the bulls, another win for the bears. NASDAQ 100 sitting, uh, two tenths of a percent above 
uh, the 100-day uh, moving average. So a uh, potential support area uh, for that index. Let's take a quick look at the weekly to see where we are relative to the 20-week, uh, a half percent below that. So uh, you got to give these moving averages a little bit of leeway. And of course, we came into the 20-week quicker than we did uh, the 100 day, but that's typical when you're recovering from uh, a rally. On to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, again, showing some relative strength. Um, some uh, four straight tight closes here, uh, but now the ascending 100 day moving average acting as resistance for this uh, index and that 38,000 level as well. On to mid caps. Right above the 100-day moving average, fifth straight down day for mid caps as well. IWM also fifth straight down day clearly has broken the 100-day moving average, 1.7% uh, above the 200-day moving average. So we are on these various indexes coming in to some support levels, potential support levels. It's only support if it holds. Uh, and not if it goes through it like a hot knife through butter the way we have through some of these other levels. So uh, it's certainly nothing to count on, but it's something to be cognizant of. Let's go to uh, the VIX. Even though the market was down today, the VIX was down as well, although closing in the upper third of the range. The U.S. dollar uh, opened down, finished positive, uh, continues to be a headwind for stocks. Let's look at the precious metals. Gold up a third of a percent. Double inside. Well, not quite double inside day, but uh, the the uh, intraday range compacting quite a bit uh, for GLD. GDX. This is gold miners up on the day by six tenths of a percent, and silver uh, just barely positive. Bitcoin. The happening, having, happening. It's an event. It's happening tomorrow. Uh, up 4.2% today is BITO, I-B-I-T, uh, up uh, about the same. Uh, reclaiming the 50-day moving average, and we uh, took a small position back into this today with that undercut and reclaim of the 50-day. We've got a good level to trade against there. On to bonds, BND, broad bond index, down a third of a percent. The long bond index, TLT, down a half of a percent. That means the long bond yield was higher, and it was by... 0.98% and TNX, the 10-year, up by 1.35%. Rates continuing to climb, although uh, below the levels from two days ago. That's our inter-asset correlation chart outlook. Let's get to the tail of the tape. You can pause this. I'll hit the highlights. One thing I do want to point out, and this is good for bulls, both the AAII and NAAIM sentiment uh, trackers that we include in every report up here have now pulled back for the third week from their uh, extremely bullish levels. In fact, we're just right around the uh, normal average for bulls on AAII now uh, and just slightly more uh, than bears, 38% bulls, 34% bears. And AAIM, this was over 100 three weeks ago, which is a pretty reliable uh, indicator that the market is do for a pullback and pullback it did down an additional 19 points uh, to 63 on NAAIM. So a little bit of good news for bulls there who are certainly clamoring for some day count, fifth day down, fifth day below the 80 EMA, fifth day below the 21 EMA. Uh, as far as sectors go, jets, gold and gold stocks, regional banks, all banks really. And here's what I mentioned, some, uh, Value sectors, uh, green on the day. Financials, uh, this is an XLC with um, Meta and Google leading the way was positive on the day, but staples and utilities also, so not all value uh, sectors. On the downside, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor with a disappointing, second straight disappointing earnings report from a major uh, semiconductor manufacturing equipment company. Yesterday, ASML, today TSM, TSM down 5% on the day, and that hit the SOX index as well. Software also down in XLK and Y, the two two of the three tech sectors lower. The only change we made in-house was to buy uh, IBIT, putting our adjusted beta back at 0.5%.
Bottom line for the day, gap up in morning rally reverses lower to straight down day for the S&P and the mid and the small caps. I did, you know, however, mention, and we are we are looking, uh, we're very oversold on the short term, but, but both of the uh, bounces that were expected the last two days ended up turning red. So until something changes with the market, until that characteristic changes, uh, best to be defensive. Let's look at, uh, first of all, Netflix, because it reported earnings after hours, and it is down 4%. Uh, didn't really see much detail on this. I did hear that they're not going to give subscription subscriber count updates. Well, that's not good. Wall Street hates uncertainty. If you don't know what the expectations are for subscribers, uh, that's just flat out strange, but it is what it is. And uh, Netflix, the first of the big seven to report, down 4.2%. We'll see how that carries over to tomorrow. Let's take a look at um, the two holdings that we have, individual names, NVIDIA undercut, but held at the 50-day moving average, SMCI undercut and closed slightly below the 50-day moving average. This is just a very small uh, starter position in this. Um, and uh, not doing the job, clearly, uh, over the last two days. Uh, IBIT, I showed that chart. And then the only other uh, exposure that we have is with SPLG, which is an S&P 500 index ETF. Uh, let's go and take a look at the five. We'll start off with uh, the five charts that were up on the day from the 21 over 21 list, led by Datadog. Uh Closed below the 21 yesterday, closed right back on it today. You can see the moving average is all stacked up there. That's the 100-day along with the 50-day and the 21-day. Has been showing some relative strength over the last couple of weeks. As software, uh, very clearly, the whole sector had been correcting. Uh, NVIDIA, the second of the five that were up today from the 2121 list. FCX, closed near the bottom of the range, but up 0.68%. Charles Schwab. Up again, uh, trying to gather some momentum after its uh, earnings report was uh, received. Well, I don't know about well-received, but it didn't go down. And uh, that's what we're looking for at for starters in this market. Dexcom's having problems at its 21-day moving average, which has rolled over but was slightly positive uh, today. Uh, we'll also show Raytheon. Look at how tight that range that it is trading in. I'm going to put an alert at 102 on this. Now let's uh, take a look at the uh, five worst on the day, and SMCI was the worst. Uh, actually, no, Micron, which we stopped out of uh, two days ago, three days ago, uh, actually two days ago. Um, and early yesterday morning, I was looking like uh, that was a mistake. Well, not a mistake. Don't confuse outcome with process. I did follow the process, but... Uh, close below, ended up closing below the 21 yesterday, further below the 21 today. Not good there. There's SMCI, Astera Labs, uh, closed mid range down 3% on the day. App Lovin breaking the 21 day moving average. This has been, this was one gap up leader from the prior quarter that continued to make higher highs and higher lows, uh, now coming apart. Uh, and First Solar, which had some, uh, had some decent days uh, down today, over 2%, still holding the 21-day moving average. Spotify continues to make lower highs and lower lows, but it's still above the 21-day moving average. So what are we looking for? Well, uh, a, a reaction to a potential uh, support level, certainly. Uh, on the S&P 500, the round 5,000 level is holding, and the NASDAQ 100 is right there uh, at the 100-day moving average. Don't know if we need some sort of geopolitical or ec economic catalyst uh, to propel us higher or some economic data. But um, as I said, very oversold. On the short term, the question would be what would happen then when we bounce up into these overhead declining moving averages. That's where the rubber meets the road and you got to bust through them in order to resume the uptrend. That's going to wrap it. Why should you be a Revere client? I just had a great conversation with a client who is pleased as punch that we were able to lock in the gains from the last five months. 
as William O'Neill said, anybody can get you in. Who's going to get you out? I can answer that question, and I answer it every night in these videos. Here's how we compare ourselves to the uh, high chart traditional advisor crowd. You know, it's personal for us because I've seen friends and family personally get their nest eggs destroyed by, uh, I don't know if it's willful ignorance or unconscious incompetence. But no downside protection is uh, – it just the, – the whole concept just absolutely drives me nuts that people think that that's acceptable. And uh, that's why we do what we do here at Revere. And if you're interested in this approach, you can email me, com or my partner, Dan Stewart, com. The phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-732. 5932. And with that, I will wrap up the video for Thursday, April 18th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.